What's up, folks? It's Ev. So, I went live earlier today on Periscope, and what a lot of y'all was telling me that Periscope was soon coming to an end. And I just logged in my Periscope account, and sure enough, the flash came up to say that they was ending in March of 2021, right? So, uh, before I start, before I go into this video, I need to um, secure contact or make sure that y'all have access to me, information that that I share, or my contact information, period, right? So, you already here. This is YouTube, the cheat code, Evan Jeremiah. Um, subscribe, right? I understand why people do it now. If you don't know by now, they, they fuck with your algorithm. And for me, I think I got like eight, 800, almost 900 subscribers. Now, when they go up to 1,000 subscribers, I can go live from here. And so, I think that's what I'm working towards, try to move at least 1,000 subscribers. So, I do have the capability of going live from here. And from what I'm understanding, um, Twitter supposed to be able to, to have live broadcast too but i don't trust twitter as much as i don't trust periscope and all of this is part of what's happening now is as far as trump draining the swamp you know that's generally been with um the bulk of my live streams have been about lately and i think a lot of people don't get it but hopefully at the end of this video you understand a little more where i was headed or what was going on because i know like i said i've been on periscope for since i think it's the summer of 2015 actually when i was on vacation but i met a lot of y'all you know on scope there's been a lot of people that that's come through some of them was around for a while and then eventually they was out too but i did grow and learn with each, each group of people that i came in contact with and um they was a part of my growth, but they wasn't a part of my my future. And I had to develop different skill sets to deal with a bunch of different people. And I basically learned that in front of people. But it was all based on the truth, the word of God, right? So I think the people that's moving with me now or understanding now, we connect on Torah, which which is order and in, in layman's terms and, and try not to make it spooky it's a morality law for us for each other and the land and everything around us then you walking in your peace and your divinity but it's something about man you know he the control mechanism so you had to deviate from what the creator said of God and everybody this is this is the clarity for me um, of course, if y'all follow me now, you know that I got diagnosed with stomach cancer. But that's not the whole story. The reason that the stomach cancer is so important is because it's a place, it's a marker that I can I can navigate from. You know what I'm saying? It's because the word of the creator is so vague for most people. And that's because you add to it. So there's got to be something concrete because we can't see God. Most of y'all can't. And that's the mark of whether he's real or not. But when from the beginning it was no sight of the creator, but it was always a coherent memory or something like that, disorder that we're supposed to have, it, it's never been anybody that said they've seen the creator. I mean, you here right now, I'm here right now. Why would Moses be any different? Jeremiah be any different? Any of those people be any different? Like organically, you know what I'm saying? So we on the voodoo right out the gate because we don't trust what's inherently in us. And when you read those scripts, they're supposed to manifest that, not subdue it. And one of the things you see with man is when they approach these writings, they, they come from a point of, can nobody do this? And I'm like, why would that be the narrative of, of this so-called book that was supposed to spawn this culture? And I'm reading it, and I'm taking in a bunch of different places at a different time. And some of the stuff mirrors itself, and then a lot of it contradicts from 
what the narrative of our God and Creator is. So I'm saying from a point of um, I'm about to put the glasses on now, because when I first picked up the book, my ego was involved too, like everybody else's. You want to know the most or be able to quote the most. And at one point, that's a circle of people going around battling about words, phrases, names, titles, and dates. And we don't live any of that time. And this word is supposed to be time. It's like the order is for morality and decency because what you couldn't eat back then, you're still not supposed to eat. But us and our imagination, we think that it's time stamped. So is, is murder time stamped? You know, murder is murder, whatever, wherever, whoever, whatever language you speak, murder is murder. However tall you are, your skin, murder is murder. So it's a it's a generic order for peace. So you hear people in different faiths talking about your calling and you got a personal relationship. It can't be personal if he quotes, do my bidding so you can be my people. Let me let me use the scripts to navigate, right? Because this is how they work. It's not to enslave you, it's to free you up. So I'm gonna turn to Jeremiah excuse me, Jeremiah seven and twenty two, right? Cause I use it like this. The books stay in the house, but I gotta use it to navigate. Jeremiah seven, twenty two. And read the whole script of Jeremiah, but it's all of it's gonna lead. The stories are just to help you out. So this is the creator talking. Thus said the Lord, host the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat. For when I freed your fathers from the land of Egypt, I did not speak with them or command them concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice. The next verse, but this is what I commanded them. Do my bidding that I may be your God, and you may be my people. Walk only in the way that I enjoin upon you, that it may go well with you. Yet they did not listen or give ear. They followed their own counsels, the willfulness of their evil hearts. They have gone backwards, not forward. This is Jeremiah 7 and 22. So there's so many sacrifices and rituals that we do as humans to try to give the Creator sacrifice. We said, I don't want that in the first place. You burn at me, you eat that shit, basically. I don't need that. I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? What I require is your obedience. And we keep trying to figure out this mystical order when from the start it was obedience. I've said this before at the point of becoming redundant, but the scripts say people are hard-headed, stubborn, and stiff-necked. So I'm going to be hard-headed, stubborn, and stiff-necked back. And I'm going to say it as many times as the Creator required me to say it. But... Um, Adam in the beginning at the magnitude of our creator now if you're going to believe in God you got to believe so when he made the whole world this is me just being borderline stupid or being base he made everything and then he made this one tree and he told Adam don't eat from this tree so when Adam ate from this tree this creator that had the power to create life, death, oceans he lost his shit, tossed his cookies because Adam defiled his favorite little tree. So y'all saying that the creator is that petty about a fucking tree that he could have created like that. And then y'all want to know the name of the fruit, whether it's an apple or not. Debating about Adam's fucking apple. I think it's Adam's disobedience that's the real story here. Not whether Eve came first, Lilith, who was the first creation story in I'm just like everybody else. I'm inquisitive. I'm a man. And I'll interject my own whatever whenever I feel like it. But even searching the creator out and trying to test him in the process of the story of if you read the story accurately, you can go to and you can be your own smart ass from when people want to catch you in a debate. The script's not a debate. Genesis 1 and 26. Let's go there. This is for everybody, the smart asses want to talk about who was first in the creation story. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 26 to see who came first. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. They shall rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the cattle, the whole earth, and all the creeping things that creep on earth. And God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created 
created him male and created female. He created them and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fertile and increase. Fill the earth and master it and rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and all the living things that creep on the earth. And that's up to um, Genesis 1 and 29. So your first order was to increase. That's life, right? It's not one of the Ten Commandments, which start arbitrarily um, in Exodus 20. We'll get to that, too. So I use this as a navigational book, not not as something to enslave anybody. At, you know what I mean? Um, so when I'm looking at this, that's generic to me. It didn't say man was before woman. It didn't say woman was before man. To see, it's a... A completion story where they doing it together. He said them, he, she, them. He gave them every seed bearing plant on the earth, every tree that has seed bearing fruit. They shall be yours for food. And to all the animals on the land, birds of the sky, to everything that creep on the earth, which is the breath of life, all the green plants. And it was so. And this is Genesis 1 and 20. Well, 1 in 20, 30 now. I'm just finishing out. But, and then you see people saying, um, well, see, we was vegetarians. Now, this is a debate about vegetarians. But, and not sacrificing sacrament when you offering something up to Creator for his, for your gratitude, which is what your sacrifice ultimately is. Because I'll read from Jeremiah 7, 22, 23 again, because he didn't concern sacrifice but if you are going to do it this is the way you do it it's not required but if you want to do it anyway we can't give a dirty sacrifice like the nations around us so your sacrifice had to be holy and your holy sacrifice was meat that y'all eat so that kills or destroys the that they didn't eat meat and there's people debating about this shit so the script's not made to be debated they made to live out and the reason that you don't eat certain shit is for your health you know it they didn't do medicine and drugs or they wasn't supposed to in the scripts the administration of drugs is called sorcery per the creator right so this is why your first amendment is so important why I use the book to navigate through real time because whether you believe in God or not honestly and most of y'all defer to Jesus the creator is real and everybody in themselves no matter what they say outwardly you know something created you. And you challenging yourself to try to learn that instead of keeping the order. And for me, it's just, it's fruitless to try to, you know, it's, it's too vast. So when I stopped trying to figure out what it was about and got into Torah, it just opened up for me. It showed me a lot of truths. And when people play and say, let the word of God separate you from things that's not like you it does it really does so if you're around a lot of fuckery you might not be keeping the word of god you know what i'm saying because it's uncompromising and um it's eye-opening too it'll people that you that you held in high regard or people that you can't be around anymore that you enjoy being around, but you gonna compromise what you believe in, in the culture. And I'm serious about keeping Torah because I was never serious about a culture before. You know, I'm just blowing in the wind and and being driven by nothing. And that's another thing too, as far as um, walking in Torah, the whole black white thing. And if I'm going to practice Torah, keep this culture, I got to be true to what it says. So let me go to Jeremiah 7 and 22. It's, it's not just I'm going here. I, I've read the whole thing and I live by it. So I'm going to jump in and reference it. But by all means, y'all, please read it because I could be lying. All right. So thus saith the, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat. See, <laughs> sacrifices and eat the meat. Sacrifice. 
For when I freed your fathers from the land of Egypt, I did not speak with them or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. So they doing it on their own. But this is what I commanded them. Do my bidding that I may be your God. Do my bidding that I may be your God. And you may be my people. So the contract goes, if you do the will of God, you as people. Not that you just arbitrarily these Hebrews or Jews because the narrative of the story, Abraham wasn't a Jew or, or Hebrew. He was a Chaldean, which would be Iraqi and Iranian by today's standard. So it didn't matter whether he was black or whatever. Once he took up the moniker of, of the creator, that's what it was. And it wasn't a particular dress code. Like you see me now with this on my head. This is this is to let me know to keep the creator on my mind. My kippa, a yamuka, right? They say yamuka, it's yamuka, kippa. This is for me. To, to keep the creator on my mind, to, to remind me that I'm supposed to think in a divine way. This is to let me know that you're not supposed to act like everybody else, right? And when I'm wearing it, people people look at me and they understand that I'm pursuing something else or I'm a part of something else. When I'm wearing my kippah, uh, a yarmulke out, it's, it's a lot of brothers from the Muslim world, the Islamic faith, that greet me, Islam alaikum, right? And I greet them back because honestly, it's the same thing, you know, it's just culture, it's just verbiage, it's just dress code. But the order of Hashem, uh, Allah, is the same. And the bickering about his name is really like <laughs> retarded. And getting here now and seeing all these elders that's been here forever, it's really the book of Job, you know. Um, but Elihu was giving it to Job about being grandiose and people don't talk about that story about Job being an elder and being self-righteous because most people are self-righteous they subtract when it's convenient for them but look listen to a couple of the tenets of the book right this is Deuteronomy of course this is Moshe Moses which that's going to be a part of my um my name Evan Moshe Jeremiah and it's attributes, you know, it's not trying to be Moses or it's just the attributes of. So I can choose my own name. I mean, I have favor from the creator, so I changed my name to Evan. That's what it means. And then you have other men that was devout in the book. I like the characteristics of Moses, you know, because he wasn't shit, basically. But he held the line. You know, he held the fuck line. And that's that's the narrative of the story. It's not a worship of Moses. It's like, yeah, his characteristics are dope. So his name was that for a reason. Uh, Moshe. So not Moses for me. I pronounce him Moshe. Evan Moshe Jeremiah. And I decided that. My mom called me Kip. You know, that's what I behave like. What, what did it mean? I don't know. How did I behave? I don't know. Now I behave. Like I have favor from God. So when you see my head, it's a whole different set of rules that I apply by. But the public don't know what the word of God is. You just freestyling. So I got acclimated with it. And after that, I found out it was my job to say. So I'm going to read and apply it to life. And this is how you're supposed to read it. You're not supposed to dog ear it, highlight it. It's your book of life. So this is Deuteronomy 4, right, y'all? All right. And now, o Israel, give heed to the laws and rules that I'm instructing you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, your God, and your fathers has given to you. Two things right here. <laughs> One thing big and glaring to me is not about doing what's right to go to heaven. It's to enter this land that they're about to get. And the Christianity somehow flipped it from present what they was going to get for opening and following the creator to something in you know, some afterlife shit so Deuteronomy 4 and 2 you shall not add anything to what I command you or take away anything from it but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin upon you alright that's Deuteronomy 4 1 through 2 
again Deuteronomy later on in Deuteronomy because this is Moses and the narrative of Deuteronomy is just the last six weeks of Moses life and I think he lived to be 120 right so where we at Deuteronomy 13 be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you neither add to it nor take away from it and he going more that there appears a prophet among you or a dream divina a dude that's doing miracles and he gives you a sign or a miracle basically saying follow him or another god and everybody in the book you the gods right i almost feel cheap talking about you the gods because it sounds like some nigga trick but that's not about black people and white people that's about the narrative of the scripts and you can find it in psalms 82 and 6 god divine being angel messenger all these are flesh things that we took this ooh, 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 narrative up so a divine being is one that does the order of the creator and you make that so unapproachable like you can it's impossible not to eat shrimp or it's impossible not to commit adultery or here go one it's impossible not to commit homosexual acts so we live in a, a jesus narrative because it's soft and gentle and you can pretend like you follow on the creator, but you're not in Deuteronomy 13 and 4 prove that you're doing something different. Because in this book, from Genesis to Malachi, there's no Jesus mentioned. And I used to follow the same thing because my grandmother, my mom, they didn't know what I know. They entered me in the script from the New Testament, from the gospel. Now, this is something you got to ask about culture. We never even asked these questions. And when I started asking questions on behalf of God, um, stuff changed. So, if I'm not adding and I'm not subtracting, I have to validate the story of Jesus. And what I learned on my own, not from my pastor, because... He's just a man, and that's just the title that he took for himself, but the book is right here, and I just read, don't add and don't subtract. So now he's got a horn swag with me and say, well, the word of God is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you don't have that authority. The way that you read this book, and it's not by my authority, it's by thus saith the Lord. These commandments were the only way that they knew that God had said it for Moses, and apparently he showed them some signs of some shit that, the creator was behind them. And that's the narrative of the story. Me, I don't believe in the Red Sea part and anything like that. I believe that Moses stepped to some situations that they probably was afraid to step to and figure like that. God must be with this fool. Or the same with Abraham or anybody that won wars, be it David, defeating Goliath, Joshua, Gideon, like all these things are attributed to the creator and it could could have been some natural disasters that ha happened to help them defeat and like oh the lord stirred up a fire to cause the, uh, the enemy to be afraid and run and i can't discredit that because i don't care about the men but it's possible for the creator to do all things but i'm not hinged on that story i i keep torah because it's easy to keep you know for me deuteronomy 30 and let's go to Deuteronomy 30, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 11, Deuteronomy 30 and 11. Surely these instructions which I enjoin upon you will give to you. This day is not too bad for confusing to you, nor is it beyond your reach. It's not in the heavens that you should say who, can, who among us can go up to heaven and get it and give it to us so we can keep it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say who can cross to the other side and get it and give to us that we can keep it. Nah, this thing is close to you in your mouth and in your heart to observe it. So I set before you this day life and prosperity or death and adversity. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his laws, his rules, that you may thrive and increase. And that the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you are about to enter and possess. But if your heart turns away and you give no heed and you are lured into the worship and services of other gods. 
I declare to you this day that you shall certainly perish. You shall not long endure on the soil that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you. This day I have put before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life if you and your offspring would live. It's Deuteronomy 30, and I just read down to 1920. And that's been the order for the Israelites in their culture from the beginning of time. Now it ended in Malachi, and I can read that and break that down for you as much as I can without being dishonest to y'all. You know, from my understanding, let's let's go. See what we get. Malachi, right? It's the last book of the New Test uh, Old Testament. Malachi three and nine. Malachi three. That's the last book. Alright. Let's try to make it out. Behold, I'm sending my messenger to clear the way for me. But for me and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple. Suddenly, as for the angel of the covenant that you desire, he is already coming. The angel of the covenant. Remember I said divine being. We think angel is flying around. And from the meaning in the scripts is not an angel that's flying around. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who... Who can hold his own when he appears? For he is like a smelter's fire. And they speak in hyperbole. Now you're supposed to envision this shit. This is the only problem with the way they spoke. Like, he is like a smelter's fire. Fuck out of here. I'm sorry, y'all. But that's just real. Like, I don't need that to connect with my, my divinity. That shit always bothered me that you got to talk this way. That shit is mad gay. But who can endure the day that's coming? And who can he appears? He is like the smelter's fire. He shall he shall act like a smelter in the purge of silver. He shall purify the descendants of Levi. What they trying to say is when the when the Creator come, he's gonna straighten it out. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem shall be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of yore, back in the day. But first I will step forward and contend against you. And I will act as a relentless accuser of those who have no fear of me, who practice sorcery, who commit adultery, who swear falsely, who swear falsely. Don't say don't swear. Say swear falsely. Who cheat laborers of their hire, who subvert the cause of the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. That's charity. Taking charity and not using it for that. Said the Lord of hosts. See? For I am the Lord. I have not changed. And you are the children of Yaqub or Jacob. You have not ceased to be. He used Yaqub or Jacob in this instant because Jacob was Israel. Israel means to wrestle with God and prevail. Jacob, it just means the deceiver. And he did deceive his brother for his blessing. But people fall in love with the characters, and that's not the will of the Creator. Yaqub or Jacob was the deceiver. You hear 5% of say Yaqubians. That's where they coming from. They not as deep as they try to make you out to be. They call themselves gods because Psalms 82 and 6 say ye are gods. So they pick and choose like Christians. But I deal with the truth organically. I don't need a building, a brother, none of that shit to walk in my divinity, right? So from the very days of your father, you have turned away from me, from my laws and, and not observe them. Turn back to me and I will turn back to you, said the Lord of hosts. But you ask, how shall we turn back? Art man defraud God? Yet you are defrauding me. And you ask, how have we been defrauding you? In tithe and contribution. You were suffering under a curse. Yet you go on defraud me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. And let there be food in my house. And thus put me to the test, saith the Lord. So, here go another bird. Two birds with one stone. Your tithing was food in the storehouse, in the church, not money. And then y'all going to say, well, I don't see the problem. I didn't ask you to see the problem. One of the tenets is don't add, don't subtract. So y'all not doing the word of God. Somehow you put that in there on your own. And when I bring this up to people that's been in this word forever, y'all lie. And then y'all become disingenuous and you want me to go along with that shit. And I'm telling my kids, I believe in God. I follow this book. And I'd have been lied to you. I don't know on purpose or not on purpose. Don't matter. When you bring this up to the people who feel you, 
they double down on the ignorance and say, you don't know. Um, coming up as a child, that was intimidating because the position of your parents in your life, even in your early 20s and 30s, you don't know how to tell them they're wrong. And that's just crazy because it's stunting so much growth. And I look at my son right now, how intelligent he is, and thinking, I, I am domineering. Like, if you follow me, I'm pretty, pretty stubborn, closed minded. And that's what being righteous in mind. And, it, and I don't do that. He, he, he's allowed to open his wings up. I am me. I'm the way I am. And he got some of me in him, but he not me. You know, so for me to get in his way. And he got me here right now. He set up the YouTube for me some years back. That wasn't something in my scope. Facebook was whoop de doo for me. Should I be 53 to 24 for this month? So I had to get out the way. I'm, I still been down more streets than he been down. So my navigational skills are better than his. But once I get him on that street, he can move a lot faster than I can. And I'm not in his way, you know. So if he brings something to me from these scripts, I thank him. Because I need that. I can't move as fast as him. And I use it to be better. But if I bring it to the the generation before me, they're going to double down on the simple shit, you know. And then want to debate you about shit I can read. Y'all couldn't read off your phones. You barely could read out the book, you know. So you really don't keep the word of God. Y'all keep this cult-like behavior and keep wondering why this shit keep repeating. Y'all throwing your hands up praying to Jesus. I haven't read about Jesus yet. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse and let there be food in my house and thus put me to the test, saith the Lord of hosts. I will surely open the floodgates of the sky and pour down blessings on you. You hear that? Christianity will say, oh yeah, he gonna pour down blessings. And he literally talking about rain because the fields wasn't producing. They was under a curse. The fields were stricken. So the blessing was going to be the skies opening up and the rain pouring down. The crops wasn't growing and the crops that did grow, like with the the case with Moses, it was beetles and other shit tearing their crops up, destroying the shit. This is a story, right? So bring the full tide into the storehouse. This shit itching right now. My hair start, these little follicles start growing back in and shit. They get real itchy. You can see the little tan I got on my head from wearing that. That's the mark of God. That's some good, some good shit to be marked with. Where you can see the tan from having that on it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it off. All right. Bring the full tide into the storehouse, and let there be food in my, my house, and thus put me to the test, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will surely, open the floodgates of the sky for you and pour down blessings on you. And I will banish the locusts from you so that they will not destroy the yield of your soil. And your vines in the field shall no longer miscarry, said the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall account you happy, for you shall be the most desired of lands, because their land got sprout out shit, said the Lord of hosts. You have spoken hard words against me, said the Lord, but you ask, what have we been saying amongst ourselves? This the people, this you, me. You have said it's useless to serve God. What have we gained by keeping this charge and walking in object awe of the Lord of hosts? And so we count the arrogant happy. You understand that's y'all that got shit. Walk around talking about your historical black colleges. All these accomplishments. Your little arrogant ass. And so we count the arrogant happy. Happy they have indeed done evil and endured. They have indeed dared God and escaped. In this vein, those who revere the Lord been talking to one another. The Lord has heard and noted it, and the scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revere the Lord and esteem his name. And on the day that I am preparing, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possession. And I will tender towards them as a man is tender towards a son who ministers toward, to him. Shout out to Wiz, my son. He did all of that. This book is profound. So y'all hearing what's going down? This Malachi 3. This is the last book. 
of the Old Testament. On that day, I'm praying, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possession. I will be tender towards them as a man is tender towards a son who ministers towards him. Now, we don't see the Creator in person, right? And a lot of times you get a lot of breaks and things go your way. Sometimes you don't even realize it, but that's him being tender towards us. But you looking for this stuff that your past is telling you, and you ain't going to never see it that way because that's not the character of God. And, of course, y'all don't know the character of God, I'm quite sure. And this ain't to talk shit to y'all, but I'm reading. I don't know how much of this y'all read before, and I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to subtract I'm not going to do business with anybody about this word because I'm reading it, you know. And on that day I'm preparing, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasure possession. I will be tender towards them as a man is tender towards a son who ministers to him. And you shall come to see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between him who has served God and him who has not served him. For lo, that day is at hand burning like an oven here we go the hyperbole all the arrogant and all the doers of evil shall be straw and a day that is coming saith the lord of hosts shall burn them to ashes and leave them neither stock nor bow but for you who revere my name a son of victory shall rise to bring healing you shall go forth and stamp like stall fair cast and you shall trample the wicked to a pulp for they shall be dust beneath your feet Hyperbole. The day that I'm preparing, said the Lord of hosts, be mindful of the teachings of my servant Moses, whom I charged at Horeb with the laws and rules for Israel, those that wrestle with themselves and prevail. I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. He shall reconcile parents with children and, and children with parents, so that when I come, I do not strike the whole land with utter destruction. Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. That's the very last verse of the Old Testament. And I haven't seen a Jesus. We see an Elijah, right? And then you see in the New Testament where they try to do spin magic and talk about Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. Elijah and Moses are mentioned. In this Old Testament or in Israel, y'all, you know something else is not mentioned in this Old Testament? Jew is not mentioned. Muslims not mentioned. These things got put in somewhere. And one of the first things that I read to y'all was don't add, don't subtract. Now, emotionally, I know, well, we heard those words forever. If who are you to tell us we're not supposed to use those words? I say the same thing to y'all. Who are y'all to tell me that I'm supposed to use them? What credentials do y'all have other than the word of God? So how do you know if I'm telling the truth? Why do I know if you're telling the truth? Deuteronomy, again, Moses left like instructions for them. And you can read all of it. I should read it. I'll start at Deuteronomy 18. The Levitical priest, the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no territorial portion with Israel. They shall live... Only off the Lord's offerings by fire is their portion. Those are the sacrifices that we bring to them. It's for food. Because they don't have any land. Well, they didn't in that narrative. Again, the Levitical priest, the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no territorial portion with Israel. They shall only live off the Lord's offering by fire as their portion. And shall have no portion among their brother tribe. The Lord is their portion as he promised them. This then shall be the priest due from the people. Everyone who offers a sacrifice, who offers, not demanded, whether ox or a sheep, must give the shoulder, the cheek, the stomach to the priest. So they got an order. So you're not doing it like Israel and nobody else. You shall also give him the first fruits, your new grain, wine, oil, and the first shearings of your sheep, the wool for clothes. For the Lord your God has chosen him and his descendants out of all your tribes to be in attendance for service in the name of the Lord. So they basically do the maintenance between the creator and the people. Supposedly, they, they're the judges. They, they set the tone and they judge you based on the word of God. If a Levite would go from any of the settlements throughout Israel where he has been residing to the place that the Lord has chosen, 
he may do so whenever he pleases. So they can move around. He may serve in the name of the Lord, his God, like all his fellow Levites who are there in attendance before the Lord as well. So none of them had any more power than any of the other ones. They shall receive equal shares of the dues without regard to personal gift or patronies. When you enter the land that the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to imitate the born practices of those nations. Go, let no one be found among you who co signs his son or daughter to the fire or who is a agua a a divino or sorcerer. So whatever the customs of these nations are, you're definitely not supposed to put that on your kids. Christmas, one of those days, Easter. The other nations were doing these things. So, And I'll speak on um, Amos 5 and 21. Y'all can check that out too. Um, Let no one be found among you who cosigns his son or daughter to the fire, or who is an agur, soothsayer, diviner, sorcerer, one who casts spells, or one who consults ghosts or familiar spirits, or one who inquires of the dead. See, they don't deal with that. For anyone who does such things is abhorrent to the Lord, and it's because of these abhorrent things that the Lord your God is dispossessing them before you. You must be wholehearted with the Lord your God. I'm going to do Deuteronomy 14 now. Those nations that you are about to dispossess do indeed resort to soothsaying aguas to you. However, the Lord your God is not assigned the like. Saying we're not supposed to do this shit. Astrology, astronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet from among your own people, like myself, him you shall heed. This Moses talking to the people. This is just what you asked the Lord your God at Horab on the day of your assembly, saying, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord your God any longer, or see these wondrous fires any more, lest I die. So this is how Moses got the job to be the spokesperson. Um, as the narrative of the story goes, one day they heard the voice of God and it was so powerful or scary that they didn't want to hear it anymore. So they nominated Moses to hear it. All right. Whereupon the Lord said unto me, they have done well in speaking this. I will raise up a prophet for them from among their own people like yourself. This is the most high. I will put my words in his mouth and he will speak them all that I command him. If anybody fails to heed the word he speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. So it's got to be the word of God that this prophet or this man of God is speaking. You can't deviate. You can't say this. You can't say that. That's why they say there's never been a prophet like unto Moses, right? But any prophet who presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I did not command him to utter, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And you shall ask yourself, how can we know that the oracle was not spoken by the Lord? If the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and the oracle does not come true, that oracle was not spoken by the Lord. That prophet has uttered it presumptuous, excuse me, presumptuously. Ha, I can spit that shit, y'all. Do not stand in dread of him. You know what I'm saying? So your prophets, your pastors, is dead. Y'all just not familiar with the word enough to do combat with it. And that's like this other shit that's going on now constitutionally. You see the struggle in our nation because it's not one nation under God. You add it to it and make it convenient for yourself and easy to do. But that cheapen what the word of God is. That's why you got to confuse them. Me, I'm not confused. Wait a minute. I got sick a little earlier, so I was asleep for the most part. I was live, but I'm cool now. But still, every once in a while, that shit. So shout out to my man that was asking about or telling me that he still had pain. I'm like, yeah, I still deal with it, but the only reason you know that that hurt is because you were live. So the alternative for me would be not feel it in death. But I'm alive, so it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And when the prophet spoke to me, he do not stand in him in dread. That's what we ended up at. And I'm talking about law right now. Like, where we at constitutionally. Now, if any of y'all know me or follow me, I don't pay taxes or drive with a license. 
And that's only by this word, by the word of God. It's no magic trick. It's not no more shit. It's the word of God. It's what the Constitution is written off of. And it make all of us free. If you will understand it. But what it also did is separated me from people that, that I was really cool with. Because again, it's not something that I play. It's something that I really live out. And I, I got too serious with the word of God for people. People that believe in God. I was too serious about it. And y'all see me smoking grass. I'm I'm the most regular person as far as this word of God is, but I don't compromise it. And people come at you in all of their emotion, but it's black and white. Don't add, don't subtract. And I can read the story and I can I can break it down and we I could get slick and talk shit and try to get a following and a PayPal or Cash App, but that's not what this is about. This is to make me better, to make me feel just like I feel now, you know, I'm comfortable, I'm definitely comfortable, so, and it's easy to read, and I'm not debating anybody on this, I've seen this word separate me from racism, you know, because man talk about black and white, you know, with this Trump shit right now, black, white, black, white, black, white, so when I just look at the scripts organically and see which one of those people was made first, black or white, um, it don't say. Say man and woman. That's what we started at, right? That's what it say. Adam and Eve. Those are the names, but don't say. You can take for granted that that region mean anything. We don't know who, who the original people are in any region. So we went at Africa is the region where the oldest human remains was, was found. And that's your media. That don't have to be so. We live in that now. So I can press that, and I do press it and test it. And when I do that, it empowers me, you know what I'm saying? It it, it make me feel more like I don't have to take in what you're saying. And society, uh, you, and most people are not ready to challenge it. Uh, I work out for myself, right? Y'all follow, y'all know I do the ball work. I'm pretty at physically fit. And I don't listen to any doctor, any man with a degree. He hadn't given me that workout routine to make me look like I look. I'm quite sure some of y'all have your personal doctors, physicians, and you've seen their bodies. And these are people that you're getting health instructions from. You know, so why should I look at somebody's body that my body look better than and think he know more than me? Or... He believe in what he doing because his body wouldn't look like that if he telling me how to keep healthy. So your credentials, they don't matter. And y'all got to let people know their credentials don't matter. Once they tell you, oh, I'm better than you because I have this or I know that, just stop talking to them. They already trying to say you got to shut up and listen. They, they not giving you your point. They going to credential themselves based on some shit that somebody told them that they believe because they want to believe. That's it. Um, I had a situation of talking to somebody trying to tell me there's no no Americans are going to be locked up in Guantanamo Bay. I just said, prove it. He kept on saying, I was there. I'm, All right, prove it. All you do is prove it. I believe that too. You know, like prove the shit. I want to believe it. And he just kept pitching for me to listen to him. I'm like, I got kids, man. I'm not just listening to you. Give me the goods and I believe. And he couldn't. And we just had note with this election that Gina Haspel was supposedly headed for Guantanamo Bay, but that's a conspiracy theorist. You know, um, so I'm about to get out of here now. And I wanted to go further, but I, I covered so much in, in the preface, right, coming up to where I wanted to be. I hope that helped y'all out with this word, and don't be afraid to to stand up because most people confuse the shit but they convinced and confused and they convince you that they know but don't give people um, one up on you make them qualify stuff so I can read this word up and down I don't have to add I don't have to do no magic tricks um, Jesus son of God Exodus 4 and 22 then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. 
pretty cut and dry. The most I said, Israel is the son. It's a challenge that we buy in Christianity. Show me where the creator said that about Jesus. Um, I'm not going to believe you. So don't pitch it to me like you're trying to convince me. Do it to yourself. Show yourself where the creator said that. That easy. If you can't find it, you're adding and you're subtracting. Peace, y'all.